Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added to the CCNA course 200-125. And this is section 4.11, Cloud and Virtualization. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain why cloud computing and virtualization are necessary for ev evolving networks. Cloud services. Cloud services are available in a variety of options, tailored to meet the customer requirements. The three main cloud computing services defined by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the special publication 800-145 are as follows. We have software as a service. The cloud provider is responsible to, for access to services such as email, communication and Office 365 that are delivered over the internet. Users only need to pay provide the data. So the, all our software will be in cloud. For example, we can open uh, Office, Word, Excel. We don't have to install an application in our computers. So for example, if you install the Windows uh, Office 2007, new, new Office came along 2013, you need to upgrade. Well, in uh, Office services as a uh, software as a service, you don't have to upgrade this. All the service will be the latest provided by uh, the cloud. Then we have a platform as a service. The cloud provider is responsible for access to the devel development tools and services used to deliver the application. The last one, we have infrastructure as a service. The cloud provider is responsible for access to the network equipment, virtualized network services and support network infrastructure. For example, here, you can have uh, in the cloud we can have our our switches our routers our servers and so on they they are given the infrastructure as a service cloud service providers have extended the model to also provide it support for each of the cloud computing services cloud models there are four different type of cloud models Cl first is cloud based application and services offered in a public cloud are made available to the general population Services might be free or off offered on a pay-per-use model. This is like uh, your Dropbox, Google Drive. Private clouds, clouds-based applications and services offered in a private cloud are intended for a specific organization or entity, such as the government, can also be managed by an outside organization with a strict access security. Hybrid clouds, a hybrid cloud is made out of two or more clouds, example, part custom, part public, where each part remains a distinctive object. Both are connected using a single architecture. And then custom clouds. There, these are clouds built to meet the needs of a specific industry, such as a healthcare or media. Custom clouds can be private or public. Cloud computing versus data centers. Data center, typically a data storage and a processing facility run by in-house IT department or leased off-site. Cloud computing is different, typically an off-premises service that offers on-demand access to a shared pool of configuration computing resources. These resources can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort. Cloud computing and virtualization. The term cloud computing and virtualization are often used interchangeably. However, they mean different things. Cloud computing separates the application from the hardware. Virtualization separates the operating system from the hardware. Virtualization is the foundation of cloud computing. Various providers offer virtual clouds services that can dynamically provision service as required. Dedicated service. Historically, enterprise services consist of a server operating system, such as Windows servers or Linux servers, installed on specific hardware. So we had different services, for different servers for different services. We had a server for web server installed in the hardware, email server, SQL server, file server, DHCP server, Active Directory services. The major problem with this configuration is that when a component fails, the service that is provi provided by the server becomes unavailable. This is known as single point of failure. Server virtualization. Server virtualization takes advantage of idle resources and consolidates the number of required servers. Allow for multiple operating systems to exist on a single server. So for example, this server, if we install the DHCP server, this server is not going to be using 
100% of resources. You might be used 40-50% of resources, other 50% are unused, and so on with the other servers. For example, email server, same, and so on. Now, with the virtualization, you, what you can do, you can install many servers in one hardware, and then obviously we would be using quite to the top of the resources. These are advantages of virtualization. One major advantage of virtualization is overall reduce, reduced cost. Less equipment is required, so we don't need to purchase so many equipment. Less energy is consumed, and we don't need to uh, as well as cool these, these devices. Less space is required. There are additional benefits of virtualization. Easier prototyping, faster server provisioning, increased server uptime, improved disaster recovery and legacy support. Abstraction layers. A computer system consists of following abstraction layers, services, operating system, firmware, and hardware. So we as a user, we talk through, we communicate with the device through the operating system, either using GUI, graphical user interface, or command line. Then the services, they will talk to the operating system. In turns, it talks to the kernel of firmware, read-only memory and then in turn read-only memory firmware talks to the hardware so we don't communicate directly with the hardware we go through these abstraction layers at each of these layer of abstraction some type of programming code is used as an interface between the layer below and the layer above for example the programming language c is often used to program the firmware that access uh, the hardware a hypervisor is installed between the firmware and operating system. The hypervisor can support multiple instances of operating system. So type 2 hypervisors. These hypervisors we install on top of the operating system. We already have an operating system running and then we install the hypervisor and then we have a different Windows or different virtual machine. A hypervisor is a software that creates and runs virtual machine instances. Type 2 Hypervisor is installed on the existing operating system, such as Mac OS X, Windows, or Linux. The computer on which hypervisor is supporting one or more virtual machine is a host machine. The two type 2 hypervisors are also called a hosted hypervisors. Common type 2 hypervisors include Virtual PC, VMware Workstation, Oracle VM Virtual Machine, VirtualBox, VMware Fusion, Mac OS X parallels. Type 1 hypervisors, now we get rid of the operating system, we install the hypervisor directly on the hardware, so no operating system will boot. So for example, in this, you need to first start the operating system, the operating system has to finish booting, and then start the hypervisor, and then start the virtual machines. Here, we don't have an operating system, direct hypervisor. The type 1 hypervisors are also called the bare metal approach because the hypervisor is installed directly on the server or networking hardware. Type 1 hypervisors have direct access to the hardware resources, therefore they are more efficient and then host than hosted architecture. Popular type 1 hypervisors include Citrix Zen servers, Microsoft Hyper-V, this is 2008 and 2012 option, Oracle VM Server for x86 and Spark, and VMware ESXi. Installing a virtual machine on a hypervisor, Type 1 hypervisor requires a management console to manage the hypervisor. Management software is used to manage multiple servers using the same hypervisor. The management console can automatically consolidate servers and power on or off servers as required. For example, assume that server 1 becomes low on resources, to make more resources available, the management console moves the Windows instance to the hypervisor on server 2. Network virtualization. Server virtualization hides the server resources. This pr practice can create a problems if the data center is using traditional network architecture. For example, virtual LANs VLAN, used by a virtual machine must be assigned to the same switchboard as a physical server running the hypervisor. Another, another problem is that the traffic flow different substantially from the traditional client-server model. Typically, a data center has a, con has a considerable amount of traffic being exchanged between the virtual router, referred to as east-west traffic. These flows change in location and, and intensity over time, requiring a flexible approach to network resource management. 
Existing network infrastructure can respond to changing requirements related to the management of traffic flows by using QoS and security level configuration for individual flows. However, in large enterprise, using multi-vendor equipment, each time has a new virtual machine is enabled, the necessary grid configuration can be a very time consuming. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.